evening. Good evening. Thank you, Nalima. Welcome. For having me. Welcome to our studios. Thank you. Our set is beautiful. It is. It is. And you see, <laughs> we see here on Fridays that we like to let our hair down and just bring in some color. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what is happening here. True, true. And you have all the color. <laughs> so. <laughs> you're you. one of the few people who can boldly wear yellow. It's not oh. an easy color to wear, but you're wearing it well. Oh. I think it's the melanin. True. <laughs> <laughs> true. And there's a quote that I like to use when I post a good outfit on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. And it says, uh, fashion is a way to say who you are, without, uh, the way to say who you are without even seeing it yourself. True, true. So what is fashion to you? Let's start there. Um, fashion is being able to dress comfortably, to look comfortable, and to express yourself and your personality. To me, that is what is fashion. You must be able to wear what you, you know, to wear what you put on or whatever you choose in the morning. And it's the thing that makes you feel like today's my good day. Today is a good day. Today I need a pickup. So for me, fashion is your everyday life. It's your everyday thing that helps you express yourself in a way you're able to meet your day. Does that make sense? Like, right. you know, you know, just, you can tell when somebody's having a bad day. You know, they're just not interested in what they put together. But often when you know that it matters to you what it is that you put together, what it is that you're wearing, it's because you know how people perceive me, how I, uh, how I carry myself, how I see myself, has an impact on who I am on that day. Right, rightly put. And we are seeing a lot of glitz and glamour here. <laughs> but has it always been like this? No, well, um, yes. Fashion for me started from when I was very young. My mom was a seamstress. She used to make clothes, so I was always around fundies, so that was nothing new for me. And we, you know, you could always get involved and tweak something, change something. And I was an art student in high school, so I was able to express myself, you know, create things, draw things, and somehow all that worked together. Right. So I have always been around fashion. So, you, so for you, it was um, from the get-go. It's it's what you saw around you growing up. Correct. Because there have been times where. Um, of careers that are not very mainstream have been frowned upon mm -hmm. in society. Very much, and especially when, when we were young, you, this fashion was not an option. Even for my parents, who and my mother was a seamstress, that was not an option. You go and do something to do with medicine or something. <laughs> Be very mainstream. <laughs> yes, yes. But I, that's not what I ended up doing. I studied actually agriculture and home economics in Egerton University. And I worked. But you see, those days you didn't choose your subject. It's not like today that you're making a choice of what you want to do. Then you, are, you, you had grades, they called you for whatever subject. And that meant, you know, people would just say, just do a degree and then go on and do something else. And that's what we did. So I worked as a stockbroker for six years. And then that's when then I changed and decided, no, I want to follow my, my love, which is passion. And fashion, I mean, that's what I love to do every day. And I have been doing that since uh, now. It's a long time. Uh -huh. <laughs> which is? I, I went into it full time in 2000. Wow. And I started working from home in my house, very simple, and, and, but in 2003 went out professional, so now we're actually 20 years doing custom-made fashion. Wow. I think this shows experience. <laughs> Thank you. So talk Thank to us you. about that light bulb moment when you said, now I'll stop stock taking, you said? Stock broking. Stock broking. Yeah. Yeah. So when was that, how was that day like that you said, now this is it for? Well, it's a lot of support from family because you know how you go home and you keep saying, I want to do this, I want to do this. And at one point they keep saying, you know, when you decide, decide, you know. And I had my family support me and say, you know, this is what you want to do, go for it. And write your resignation letter. In fact, somebody helped me write my resignation mm -hmm. letter and then I handed it in and, and that was it. And there's been no looking back. I knew this is, you see, I have seen my mother do it, so I knew if she can do it, it's been something that's been with us all this time. And it, she did it effortlessly. Right. effortlessly. Mm -hmm. And I knew I 
possibly could be able to do it and with the business uh, influence, having studied, having being um, interested in doing it in a more professional way. So I knew this is something I could do. I didn't go into it scared because it's something I have seen. You know how you, it's like, you know, you've seen your mom cook a certain meal, so you know yeah. you can wing it. Yeah, so that's how it was. I mean, I didn't think that I was anxious or scared, but it was a thing that I knew if I do this, I do that and do that, what I have seen my mother do, it will work. And yes, it has been working. Right. And you know, when we see uh, pieces like this, made of leather and with details, you say it's easy to complement this, but we really want to understand the journey. Yes. Okay. Because there has to be one for people to understand that uh, getting to a certain level, there's work yes. that yes. is involved. Yeah. Did you ever make uh, a piece or a collection that you were not very pleased with? Many times, many times, because sometimes you start off with, a, with an idea and it doesn't get to where you want. But you see, the beauty in art or in being a creative is that there's no blueprint. It's not like it must be like this. And you can go tweaking it and get it to what you want it to be. But sometimes things don't go as you hope and you have to discard something and say, let me put that aside and you start something new. So that does happen and more because it depends on where you are in your mind, if you're stressed, if you're uh, upset, if you're preoccupied. It's in, it's in everything, it's in life. If you're not focused properly and you're not giving everything your fast um, uh, or your best, you will do a half standard something. So, I mean, like for us, we have always said, you know, uh, inspiration, my inspiration is always an ornament. I love our African ornaments and I, have been having this conversation and saying that culture, actually, our culture, speaks fashion. Right. Um, just look at, you know, like, you know those uh, coffee table books where you see, like, Africa adorned, and you look at those pictures and you see these people are beautiful. They're not dressed in clothes like we are today, but they have their ornaments, and everything they did enhanced who they were. If you look, just, you know, I keep looking, that's my favorite pastime. I right. look through those books and I keep seeing that these people, which we somehow turn, turn, sort of tend to look down on, had something going. And for me, that is my inspiration, African ornaments. So you'll see all my collections have something from our ethnic yeah. groups, our ethnic backgrounds. Um, like this one is a Samburu dress inspired the apron, which is our now national dress, which we should all be wearing proudly. Even my sweater sort of kind of looks like an apron. <laughs> but that is the inspiration, to have something that speaks, you pick from your culture. Because, you know, see how the earrings are, the ornaments, the way they beat things, the way they on, put ornaments on the neck. That is very, speaks fashion. That is right. very original, very unique. And I think it's time that now we start to look back on what it is that we did and starting using, start to use that in what we do today. Um, because it's rich, it's unique, and it's very who we are. Right. And the fashion space, now that uh, a little African in every, every piece that you make. Yes. So there are different uh, styles mm -hmm. and of course uh, different materials uh, ready to wear mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the ones that are more custom you know custom unique, made or yes. runway the big ones we <laughs> see on Victoria's <laughs> Secrets and stuff yes. so once someone establishes like you established what is it that you exactly want to put out there was that confusing for you because there are many people who just seeking to get an identity? So for me, how I started was for with uh, custom and bridal. Okay. Um, at that time, there wasn't much choice in the bridal uh, uh, space. And, and you know, people want something different. You want a gown which looks African. Um, there was a time when people just didn't want to wear a white dress. And you want something gold, you want an African thing. And it's not how it is today where there's so many functions even before the wedding. So you have many opportunities to have something before right. your big day. So at, at that time, 
people there was not many people importing dresses and and then if you're f we are all friends and we are the same age mate and we're all getting married so we'll have the same dresses so people reach a point and they want something different i don't want to wear a gown like my friends so that was when we started doing bridesmaids dresses doing bridal gowns so there was a need in the market that was not available so it made it very easy to get into that space understand what people want have choose good fabrics get a good fit and a good finish and that made what we were doing very possible right today there is like you say there's ready to wear there is and that is where the market is going because you have to be able to do en masse and be able to provide it at an affordable and a quick um, turnaround to make it available to people um, so there's a market for that then there's also a market for those people who want an outfit for a special occasion you have today you have an event and there's a theme you know coming futuristic yeah, something you know <laughs> uh, red carpet and yeah. so you can't just pick something from your wardrobe you do need to go to some creative a designer a tailor and say i need this i need that so that has also changed the market scene for us as creatives and as designers because you have to now be able to have a quick turnaround and to be able to meet the needs of your clients right and how did you then master uh, your clientele mm, so a good space is word of mouth you do a good job you get a good client, you get a repeat client, you refers you to somebody else. So um, to be committed to try and get to understand what your client wants, to be able to meet their needs, to be able to make clothes that complement and suit their style as well. It's not just to make a dress and put it on somebody. You have to understand your customer. What do they want? What are they trying to do? What are they trying to achieve? And with time, you get to be able to enhance that. You have a good team around you, uh, good tailors, good cutters, good people who understand good fittings and good finishes, and that creates a good team to be able to finish the whole cycle. Right. And uh, identifying uh, when you're using models for the different outfits, what again do you consider? So um, it depends. Now it depends on what the collection is. So okay. when it's bridal, of course you want to look for um, people who have like a softer face because that's what bridal will be but if you have an event where you're looking for something you know outstanding and bold so you want people with strong features strong character mm -hmm. um, but the strong general, the jawline yes, okay. yes yes although today uh -huh. the good thing is that we have anyone who enters into the into the fashion field into the modeling world already has it in them to be able to have the confidence to stand on a catwalk or to do the catwalk. So you will find that most models will be able to fit in to that. And today we want it different as well. We don't want to just stick with one type of model. We want to be able to work with different types of models. So the market is changing a lot. You'll find, I saw a friend of mine who did a collection where there were models of all sizes and and that was interesting that was different so that you know it's also appealing to everybody like i say the normal human i want to right. see somebody that you know you look fantastic but you know not all of us will be able to look like <laughs> you so you want to be able to see something that you say okay i can wear that that looks nice so any model really if you set yourself to do that part of the career that in your career life or your career path right. you should be able to have the confidence to carry and that's what a designer wants i just want somebody who will be able to be confident to carry whatever garment i put on them and they say okay i can do this right and fashion there have been cases from time to time about one designer coping another designer's uh, you know line outfit inspiration something like that so how do you then uh, stay unique so the good thing is always be uh, being a creative is that you're always growing always doing something different so you're always you have to decide what is your inspiration and like we said if if you have something that inspires you that spurs you to keep doing what it is that you do it won't matter to be copied it feels it doesn't feel great but it's a compliment if somebody says, oh, she did that, and you know, yeah, 
that's a good thing. So, so you want to be able to be, you know, keep changing. So you have to keep yourself in a good space. Like, I mean, to be honest, I, you know, this season hasn't been so great. We haven't done many shows. We haven't done many things. So there haven't been many new things happening um, apart from what you do for your clients. And I'm excited about the textile, the leather and textile week coming up because then we get an opportunity to have another thing to showcase and to do a new collection. So we, I like to think that if I have something to inspire me and to keep me creative, I will do something new and something different. Right. If somebody feels like they like it and I mean, think about it. We're always looking at magazines, looking at Pinterest, looking for ideas. So we are all looking and getting from somebody else, which is not bad, but to me, I don't think that is bad. Then you tweak it and make it your own. It's only bad if I take your dress exactly the way it is and then call it my own. But if I have tweaked it, turned it, and done something different with it, then it's different. So um, being a creative means you're always growing. So I'm hoping that we all in the creative industry will not always, I mean, look into yourself to get whatever it is that inspires you to make something new, something interesting. Right. And before we get to just talk a little bit about the outfits that we have here, I'd like you to give us uh, a few tips on um, how someone can identify their style. Okay. Now that you've been doing this for 20 years, <laughs> you must have something good to tell us. <laughs> uh, well, that's not an easy question, mm -hmm. but let me give it a shot and say, I like to think what does what makes me happy and and what makes me comfortable right and then I look at my you know look at your body shape and you know always dress what makes you feel comfortable you don't want to be in something that you now if it's a skirt you're constantly pulling I mean be comfortable and be happy right and I always say enhance what you like about yourself and minimize what you don't like about yourself See, I'm a kikui, I'll keep telling you I don't like my legs, so I'll wear boots to cover <laughs> my legs. <laughs> so something like that. Mm -hmm. So somebody else will say, um, I like um, uh, my neckline, so I will wear something that shows off my neckline. I'll wear jewelry, I'll wear something that enhances that. So that's my, my go-to. Enhance okay. what you like and minimize what you don't like. Okay, so maybe a quick a quick advice for me. I like my waistline. So, yes. what should I wear more? Okay, mm -hmm. so do something that shows off your waistline. Okay. Like what you're wearing today is perfect. Mm -hmm. And then cinch, you know, put a nice belt that always shows off your waist or a clean dress that keeps your waist visible. So that works. Okay, <laughs> put that in mind. Yes. <laughs> so let's talk about what we see. Okay. This piece right here. Yeah. So this is uh, Kenyan leather. This mm -hmm. is because we have the leather, the textile and leather week coming up. Mm -hmm. I've decided to show you know something that uses our Kenyan leather. This is um, a waterfall jacket. Right. Um, it's all leather, and then it has African um, embellishments, which is brass pieces on it. Yeah. Um, this is a simple accessory. You just wear it over. You can be in a plain black outfit or plain anything, and you just throw it throw over, it on. and it it's dramatic. <laughs> we should have had a model, but you, you know you could be a model, but yeah. <laughs> and then that is it's it's. So what we did this time is we're having a whole collection of accessories, um, so that we can do things that you can add on to your your outfit that give you something African, something unique. Um, so that's the collection that we're doing. Okay. So everything will have something either leather or ornamental or in texture, in fabric. Right. And then for, I'll, I'll try this one on. And then we talk prices. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and well, this that is uh, just in front, of, in front of us. I see beads. I see leather. Mm -hmm. I just see, I, I see a lot of beauty. I see African. Good. Talk to us Good. about it. Good. So this is inspired by um, the Samburu tribe, the, where, the, where the collars, which have layered and with mud, covered in mud. Right. And that's what has inspired this. So I've used beads, and I want to use something that is easy to wear, something that is comfortable, and something that is light. 
That collar, even if you see a woman carrying it very confidently, is not very light. But this is light, easy, and you just take it off and wear it as at, at will. And I have put a leather base on it right. so that you can accessorize something else. You know, you could be in a simple plain dress and you put that piece on, you could wear the, the collar apart from the apron all together. Right. And it could just be a plain simple dress and that is something that you can adorn and you've changed your your plain dress into a statement piece. Right. So that's what it is, an accessory that makes it a statement piece and very African. Right. I'm seeing it look very well with my black jumpsuit. Correct. That would be perfect. That would go well. Perfect, yes. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, the biggest concern for people is usually local made goods. Now, clothes in this, uh, <laughs> in this specific discussion are costly. What's your take on that? Okay. Cost of production is not, is not usually is the main um, limiting factor because you, our fabrics may not be locally available, so you may be buying things that are already using fabrics that are already imported, which means they're not cheap. Um, you have, I mean, cost of making one item, expertise, a quick turnaround, all those things affect what your end product cost will be. Mm -hmm. um, and that is why having the week like the week we're having is talking about the whole value chain of the textile, right from the thread to the finished product like we have, and being able to see how can we partner with people to get things into a better space in our production. Because that's really where all designers are looking to go. How can we reduce the cost of our products, of products so that it's available to more people? Um, improve on our quality, improve on our finish, and then make it affordable. So the whole point is that we want people to wear what it is that we create. We don't want it to be for a select few. Um, so pricing is always the challenge. Okay. But think of it this way. If I go for something custom made, it is made specifically for mm -hmm. you. It is, fabric is bought just to be made for you. So really that can't be the same as if we decide we all want to go for t-shirts mm -hmm. and we, are able, we all want white t-shirts. I mean, it's possible to buy fabric for a thousand t-shirts, cut a thousand t-shirts. The cost of production of something that is uh, overly done over and over again is much cheaper than that one item. So that is right. the challenge with coming to a designer to a, for a custom-made outfit as versus buying something that is ready-made. Right. And of course, the government is keen on improving the textile industry. And of course, even from the finance bill and, and the budget that was read in Parliament, then there's going to be more taxation on uh, importation. Imp importation. Yes. And of course, now less for exporters yes so we're looking into improving our local market correct so correct. do you think that will now help us uh, afford more of our local production what's going to happen is that the people in production in manufacturing have to think about how is it how are we going to do this how are we going to make things affordable how are we going to partner and work together to make things uh, um, um, how, so to make our products available and at an affordable price. Right. Now, like, uh, like I was saying today, that we all have to start finding new ways of doing things. So mm -hmm. I guess this is the, the, the new normal that we're right. going into, that we have to figure out things to make things affordable. So this is a, a, a conversation that has been in the fashion industry, in the fashion council, in the... People are always trying to think, how are we going to do this? Because we can't say there is no importation of, of, or, of maybe, let's say, secondhand or, you know, uh, thrift things, or there is, um, you know, uh, reduced or increased tax on imported finished goods. Right. But if we're not making the clothes, we still have, to, there'll still be a gap. So we have to then decide how is it that we're doing, what are we doing different to be able to meet that gap? So that even if we close the doors on those other things, we, people are meeting the needs that are there. Okay. So it's not an easy conversation, but it's a conversation that I think the, the, the fashion industry is looking at and is very keen to meet that need. Right. And let's talk about the um, 
leather and textile week. A week that is happening next week and uh, what you will be showcasing as well. Um, so we're excited because we'll be able to look at what the different um, East African designers will be bringing to the table and it will be exciting for people to come and see what uh, will be on sale, what will be, you know, I think it's, it's, it's not been, we haven't had something like this in a while so I think it's, it's a good opportunity to be able to see, there have been lots of pop-ups everywhere but this is now more East African, more inclusive of many different um, brands and and it's the whole value chain from thread to the finished product right. uh, both in in textile and also in leather so, so it should be an ex yes it should be a very exciting event and uh, um, like I said we'll be having something more accessory I will do something in leather and I will do something in textile and because I have the great opportunity to be working with both I I do both leather and uh, textile in my my things, in my products, so that will be an opportunity again to showcase that bit of it. And I will, it will all have some African something. Some vibe going on. Yes, because that's what I love. Right, and we'll be there to check it out. Please. And, uh, and of course, if uh, I know by now you probably have models, but in case you need more, you fit the bill. We're here. <laughs> Thank you. We're here Thank for that. You. So, looking forward to that. And maybe now as a parting shot, because I understand we have to close. Yeah, okay. Uh, for the upcoming fashion designers, of course, you'll be engaging with a lot of them yes. in next, week, next week's event. But uh, what would be the word? Because the e economy, the times are tough. Yes. There is a designer who has this dream. They are creative. Mm but they just don't know exactly where to start. My, my, my patting shot to a young designer who's looking to get into the fashion industry is, don't start off on your own. Find a designer, get into a design house, work with somebody, learn the ropes while you're working under that person. Right. Um, because if we all say that we all want to go and start something and we are all going to be out there, too many of us doing too many varied things. You have to learn the same things that I have learned for so many years. You have to make the mistakes that I have made for so many years. But if you work under somebody and are willing to give that designer or that creative or that company your time, you learn a lot and then after you've done your time, you are able to go off and do start off on your own. So my thing to young designers is don't always go off and launch on your own. Right. Work under a designer. Don't be so quick just to... Yeah. Learn. To learn the ropes. Learn everything. We've made so many mistakes. We've learned so many things. We have done wrong investments. We have trained and untrained and trained people and they leave. Right. Why would you start and do all of that all over again? Just learn from somebody. Um, do, do your time. Learn the ropes learn the processes. There is a lot that goes on in fashion and not just the glamour of the final product. Right. The hard work is what happens in the workshop. Yeah, and then the business <laughs> part of it as well. Yes, yes. Okay. And, and there's a lot to learn. I have um, had great opportunities to mentor very many young students and, and that is something that I'm always committed to, to train and train and let people come and observe and see what it is that goes on in a fashion house. And then you can decide, do I really, really want to go into this? Because it always looks nice and glamorous out there when you see the finished product. But when you actually in a workshop and see things, the struggle, the time that goes into it and you're not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> you appreciate but that process. Yes, you appreciate okay. the process. And if my director can allow me one question. Yes. Then for these designs, what is the, the dream? Do you want to see this on uh, bigger platforms, on Paris Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week? You know, that is every fashion designer's <laughs> dream. Every. So it is not just to make things just for our Kenyan market, but it would be a great opportunity to be able to have something um, especially ethnic inspired that goes beyond our borders. Right. That is my dream. Right. Thank you so much for Thank being you. part of this conversation, for just coloring our Friday and just telling us a few tips about fashion. I will take mine very seriously. 
the Good. advice. It will work. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, thank you so much. And Hoping for you. more engagements in the future. Thank you very much. Thank right. you. And we've come to the end of the program this evening. This has been a center stage and Monica Canari has been taking the center stage. She is a renowned fashion designer. And of course, these beautiful pieces are right here on the set. And about pricing, they can ask you. Thank you. <laughs> you can engage her, of course, across her social media platforms as well. But for us here, it's good night. But let's keep engaging. Let's keep the conversation going across all our social media platforms. A look up TV on Twitter, a look up TV on Facebook, and look up TV on our YouTube channel. I am Nancy Nalima. I appreciate you for watching. And our sign language interpreter for tonight has been Angel Lois. Have yourselves a pleasant evening, a lovely weekend, and make it fashion.